This is the typical example of a bag only becoming popular because it's from a luxury house. I doubt that there are many people out there who would see this bag walking down the street and they would have to stop the person carrying it because it's honestly just not that great. Hi guys, my name is GPS and welcome back to my channel. I did a video last week on my favorite more entry-level bags from Hermes that I personally love and use on a regular basis. I think just as much as I use my Birkins and Kelly's and I find them to be a great addition to anyone's luxury collection, whether you are someone who's just about to jumpstart your luxury journey or you're a serious Hermes collector. But today I thought that I would share with you my brutally honest thoughts on some other very popular bags from Hermes that I personally don't care for. So if you want to hear about my least favorite bags from Hermes that I find to be overpriced or just not really aesthetically pleasing, or they just did not work out for me for one reason or another, then please keep on watching. Before we actually get into talking about these bags or well, more like me tracking them, I wanted to tell you guys a couple of things that go through my mind when I try to review and decide if I'm going to move ahead with purchasing a larger ticket item. The first thing that I try to think of is let's say I'm looking at a bag that's $2,000. The very first thing that I do as objectively as I possibly can be is that I look at the material that the bag is made of, the hardware, the design element and features and the thought that goes into that particular piece. And I try to see if all these elements add up to justifying that price and if the bag itself represents and communicates that price tag to me. The second thing that I try to do if I'm not sure about something is that I try to strip away all branding. If we're talking about a Chanel bag, I try to uh, strip away the CC logo. If we talk about an Hermes piece, I try to strip away the Hermes logo on it. And I'm not saying that I don't care about branding because it would be quite an odd thing to say on a luxury channel. But at the same time, I try to evaluate if the only reason why I'm interested in that bag is the branding. I look at the design element and design features because I want to see if I would still be interested in the bag purely because of its appearance. Then I also look at its different features and the functionality. Would I be able to take advantage of each one of them? And then these are really the things that I try to go through really quickly in my head when I'm not sure about picking up a piece. But as you heard, all of these are subjective. So while these are great tips that I try to do, there are going to be things that you love that I might not care for and vice versa. So as long as something brings a smile to your face and it makes you happy, then go for it. And that's what I wanna say about this video as well. There might be pieces here that I hate and you love, but in that case, please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and tell me why you love that particular piece. We had such a great conversation in one of my previous videos where I mentioned that I don't really care for the Hermes click bracelet. And so many of you guys expressed to me that you love that bracelet and it's been part of your collection for many years and you've been collecting them. And it was so great to hear about your thoughts and how it worked out for you and why you enjoy wearing that piece. So again, if any one of these pieces are things that you love in your collection, then please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Bag number one is actually a piece that I still remember the first time that I saw it. It was at an airport a couple of years ago and I thought it was quite nice. I actually asked the essay working at the airport if I could have a look at it. And when she took it out of the cabinet and I saw the price tag, I was completely shocked. It is the Double Sons tote bag that I'm talking about, which is a very simple tote bag made of leather. It's really no frills. The only added design element is the fact that it's made of two pieces of different colored leathers. So on the inside, it's a different color than it is on the outside and you can actually reverse it and turn it inside out and you have a different colored tote, which is nice. I mean, it's made of the best quality leather. The stitching is beautiful on the back considering that it's made by an Hermes craftsman and it's handmade, but that's really pretty much it. I mean, there is nothing else I can say about that particular piece, but it costs over $4,000 but it costs over $4,000. It comes in a couple of different sizes and yes, it's nicely done. But other than that, I don't know why you're paying $4,000 for a tote bag. And the fact that it's reversible is not that innovative either. There are so many brands out there who have done it before Hermes did it. So for me, that bag is just still a mystery why people buy it or why people would consider picking it up, especially because it comes in exotic skins. 
I've seen that bag in Mad Alligator for I think over $40,000, which is just absolutely mind blowing to me. That anyone would pay $40,000 for a plain leather tote bag. But I guess some people do because Hermes has been making that bag for a couple of years now at this point, and I'm sure even longer than that. So that is a bag that I personally would not recommend for anyone to buy, unless you can maybe buy it from the resale market, because there are so many much nicer and well-designed pieces that you can pick up for $4,000. The second bag that I wanted to tell you guys about is a piece that was very popular for a period of time, but I haven't seen many people wearing it recently. I remember that there was a time when I went to Hermes, there were so many people carrying this bag. And it is the Convoyeur or Convoyeur mini bag. I'll put the picture and the name up here. And it is a piece that I don't find to be sophisticated or refined. I don't think there's anything Hermes about it. There is not one design element that would be, I think, reflective of Hermes's craftsmanship or what they are able to do and design. It kind of looks like a coach bag and there is nothing wrong with buying a coach bag. I think there are some beautiful designs by coach. But coach bags don't cost $5,000. Yes, you heard me right, this bag is over $5,000 in plain leather. But it is a piece again that Hermes makes in exotic skins, which of course would be double or triple the price. I personally don't think that anyone should buy this bag for the price. It's super simplistic and it kind of looks like a coin purse. On the inside, it has these two little studs that you can attach a shoulder strap to, which is what Hermes is doing with the Kelly and the Constance wallets now. But those are at least very well and nicely designed pieces. Whereas this bag doesn't really have any design elements to it. I don't think you could pack much into it because it just has such an odd shape. The closure isn't something that would be reflective of Hermes either. Hermes is definitely not the first brand that comes to mind when I see this piece. And if it was $500, maybe I could get on with it, but for $5,000, please don't waste your money on this. Number three is a bag that has been around for a long time and it remains to be very popular. And the bag that I'm talking about is the Garden Party, pretty much in all the different sizes. I think it comes in three or four sizes. It might be four at this point. It used to come in 30, 36, and 39, but now they also have the huge cabin version in 49 in the men's travel collection which is, I think, kind of interesting that Hermes does this from time and time again. They take a very popular design from the women's collection, whether it's the herd bag or the um, garden party in this case, and they kind of just blow it up and make it much larger, and they think that now it's the perfect bag for the men's collection. And I think there are a lot of people who feel a little bit uncomfortable wearing a bag from the women's collection, so they just automatically go to buy th something that's much larger from the men's collection. But I don't know of many people who would need a garden party in a size 49. So if you like the design, go for whichever size you want, whether it's the herd bag or the garden party or the Birkin. Um, but let's get back on track and talk about the garden party in general. So the garden party is a piece that I think is nicely done. I can definitely see the appeal. It's a very simple design and it's well priced for our mass compared to some other designs that they have. It's definitely at a lower, more entry level price point. But at the same time, I don't think you should be spending over $3,000 on a plain piece of leather that's turned into a tote bag. Because while it comes in a great variety of colors and leathers, it usually comes in new seasonal colors, as well as more neutrals and regular colors, and a bunch of different colors, and, and a bunch of different leathers, even canvas, which is at an even lower price point. It's just not really a bag that I think would showcase anything that Hermes is able to do because of course, again, it's made of the best quality leather and it's beautifully stitched, but it doesn't really show off Hermes craftsmanship because there's not much to it. It's basically this piece of leather tote bag that has two handles attached to it. And that's really it. On the inside, it's made of canvas. It has a zipper on the inside in case you're interested. It does have a zipper compartment, but personally, it's not a bag that I would think is $4,000. It is a bag that I did consider a couple of years ago. I remember looking at this and I even took a picture of it that I put up here. But I came to realize that this happens with Hermes a lot. When you have pieces like the Garden Party and the Evelyn that you constantly see around, a lot of people have it, it can kind of sneak up on you and when you have nothing better to buy, you end up buying those, even though you never really like them and they just end up growing on you, but you're never really going to be in love with those pieces. 
And it's so funny because I remember talking to one of you guys on my previous video in the comment section down below uh, about the Evelyn bag. And I, that's exactly what I said. It is a piece that you see around you all the time. And even if you don't like it, it kind of sneaks up on you at a point when you have nothing better to buy. So you're just like, okay, I kind of want something new in my life. So I'm gonna go for that. So it did happen to me with the garden party, but thankfully I passed up on it. And I'll put a picture of it up here. I was looking at it in the canvas version in black on black, of course. But I know this is a very popular bag. A lot of people like it because it's super simple. It's quite casual and it's very easy to kind of spice up. You can put a twilly on it. You can put a rodeo on it and you can make it a little bit more personalized. But I just don't think that you should be paying over $3,000 for one of these bags because I think the starting price for the size 30, which is the more popular size because it's the smallest, is around $3,000, $3,500, depending on what letter you choose. So for me, it's a no-go, especially because if you guys live in New York, I don't know if this is a New York thing, but a lot of people um, carry this Trader Joe's bag with them, whether they go to work or they go grocery shopping, which is great that they use reusable bags, but they carry around these Trader Joe's bags that in my opinion look pretty much identical to the garden party in canvas. So in case you've been a fan of this look and you want to test the water, see if you would take advantage of that bag, you can always go to Trader Joe's and see if you can pick up one of those reusable bags from them because they do have a very similar appearance in my opinion. And then last but not least, the ugly duckling of the Hermes bag family, the Lindy. I think a lot of people will not be happy with me mentioning this because I'm pretty sure that it is the most popular bag from Hermes right after the Birkin and the Kelly. Even so that in some countries, the Lindy is considered a quota bag. They have to limit the amount of Lindy's that one person is able to buy because they are so popular. And it is a bag that comes in a couple of different sizes. In this case, I'm not talking about the 20, which is the smallest size. I actually quite like that. That's the newest launch from the Lindy range. And I think it's quite cute. You can put it crossbody and because it's made of such a soft leather, it kind of forms to the shape of your body, which I think is a great advantage. A lot of other Hermes bags don't do that. But in this case, I'm talking about the 26, the 30, the 34, and I think the 39. And then again, there might be a larger version, which they've released for the mass collection. But those are really the Lindy's that I'm not a fan of. And I think the Lindy is the typical example of a bag becoming popular purely because of the fact that it's from a luxury house. I doubt that there are many people out there who would see this bag walking down the street and they would have to stop the person carrying it to ask where it's from because it's honestly just not that great. And if you strip away the branding, I don't think many people would be interested in it. If you look at the construction and the overall appearance of the bag, it just looks very unproportional and kind of awkward. It has these tiny little handles on the side that is connected with this larger, thicker leather strap that you're supposed to hold and you're supposed to use that to put it around your shoulder. But the whole thing just looks so unconnected and just not well thought out and well put together. I do like each element and of course it's beautifully done, but it just, the bag as one just makes no sense to me. Yeah, I've just never really liked it and I don't think many people would if you stripped away the Hermes branding, but this is just my personal opinion. If you like that bag and you love that bag, then please ignore me and keep using it and loving it. But please let me know why you enjoy that bag. I would love to hear your thoughts and I would love to learn from you and maybe I could give through your eyes another chance to this bag. But personally, I'm not a fan and not to mention the fact that it's almost impossible to get in and out of it because when you use the bag, it kind of collapses in. Like, of course it does because you're not holding it. Uh, by using the handles, you're holding it up and you're carrying it by this weird strap that is attached to the bag. And because you're uh, lifting it from the top, it kind of collapses in. And the zipper is on a curve, so you can actually not open it if you're holding the bag. You have to put it down on a completely flat surface so you can open it, especially once the zipper becomes more worn. I've been out shopping and walking around with friends on multiple occasions where we completely had to stop when their phone was ringing that was in their bags. Because you have to stop, you have to put your bag down, and that's the only way that you can open it. Even the zippers are odd. They're kind of this teardrop shape and yeah, as you guys can tell, I'm not a fan of this bag. And I think I wouldn't be so harsh on this if this bag was, I don't know, $3,000, which is still a lot of money, but compared to other prices by Hermes, it's not that much if you consider that a Birkin starts at, what, $10,000? It's a lot of money, but not compared to a Birkin. 
but this bag, the Lindy, and I'm gonna talk about the 30 size, which I think is probably one of the most popular ones, other than the minis, the 20 and 26. That bag is around, I think that it retails between eight and $9,000, depending on what leather you choose, which is just completely mind-blowing that someone would pay almost $10,000 for this bag that is just so awkward looking, in my opinion. And that's really the only reason why I'm so harsh, because I personally think that's that might be just me that this bag is only popular because it is from Hermes. I don't think many people would be looking at it and would be considering it if it was from a completely different brand. When we talk about the mini version, I think it's a little bit of a different story. I like the fact that it doesn't have the weird thicker handle that connects the two side handles, that it has more of a function of a crossbody bag. I think it just looks overall more proportionate. But at the same time, it's still not a bag that I'm after. If I ever got offered it, would I take it? Perhaps if there wasn't anything else on the horizon. But any of the other Lindy's, I would just not recommend to anyone. And if you are thinking about purchasing a Lindy from Hermes, please just try to rethink if you're buying that bag because it's from Hermes or you truly like the design. And if it brings a smile to your face, ignore me and buy it. But if it's purely because of the fact that you're still waiting for a Birkin or a Kelly and that's the only thing that's available to you, a Lindy, then I would probably reconsider buying it because $10,000 for a bag like this, I think it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money in general, but especially for something like Lindy, I don't know. And this is it guys, this completes my video on my least favorite Hermes bags that I would not really recommend to anyone. I hope you found that I was reasonable with all my critiques and if you have any feedback for me then please let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you want me to make more of these anti whole type videos then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!